Hello and welcome to round two of the Women's Six Nations Championship, which concludes in the Irish capital in Dublin and the meeting of Ireland and Italy at the RDS Stadium. Well, two sides without a win after the opening round last weekend. Ireland losing to France in Le Mans in the opening match. And as you can see, the results so far this weekend, Scotland going down by 10 points against the French. England far too strong for Wales to make it two wins out of two. So France and England both unbeaten in the championship after two rounds. The table then looks like this so far. As you can see, England maximum points as well with the bonus point, 10 points. France with the victory against Ireland, a bonus point as well, nine points to their total. Scotland with four and Ireland and Italy yet to register points on the board. That will change today. Beautiful afternoon, I'm delighted to say, on Easter weekend in Dublin. 12 degrees, the sun is out and very little wind to speak of. Ideal conditions for both teams and very much looking forward to what we hope will be an entertaining contest. The win predictor is, uh, well, as you can see, I guess that a reflection of how the sides have been over the last couple of years in the championship. Most people expecting the Italians to come out on top, even away from home, something they've never managed before, a win in Dublin against Ireland, although the results over the last couple of years have favoured the Italians in this head-to-head. Decent reception, you have to say, for the crowd that have turned out for this second round match, the final second round match in the Women's Six Nations Championship between Ireland, the hosts, and Italy here at the RDS. A beautiful, sunny Sunday afternoon in the Irish capital as both teams make their way out onto the pitch. An awful lot at stake here, neither side with a win after the opening round. Both confident they have what it takes to topple the other over the course of the next 80 minutes, but uh, we will find out which side We'll emerge on top as the game commences. Before all that, the anthems.
Well, there you go. I tell you what, if you want an example of composure, Stevie Mulrooney's pausing himself when he realised they played the wrong anthem first is everything you need to know and a brilliant job he's done once again. Well, four changes to the Ireland starting 15 from last weekend. The big news, the return of captain Sam Monaghan in second row after recovering from injury. She joins Dorothy Wall at lock. Grace Moore comes in at blindside flank, which means Aoife Wafer switches to seven. In the backs, Dan O'Brien comes in at fly half to replace Nicole Fowley. Enya Breen takes over at inside centre from Aoife Dalton in a new look midfield with Evan Higgins and a back three of Parsons, then Corrigan and Delaney unchanged. That's the home side. What about the Italians? Four changes from the side that lost to England pretty comprehensively. Three of those changes come in the pack. Ilaria Aureghetti replaces Giulia Cavina at number eight with Georgiana Duca coming in to the second row with Sara Tunesi switching to blindside flanker and Isabella Locatelli dropping to the bench. Silvia Tarani also moves to loose head from Hooker to accommodate Vittoria Vacchini. In the back, Emma Stevanin starts at inside centre with Michaela Solari ruled out through injury and out for the rest of the tournament. Sophia Stefan and Veronica Madia continue at half back. A back three of Dinka, Muzzo, and Vittoria Ostuno Manuzzi at full back. A look at both benches. Eva Dalton wearing number 23. Some say extremely unlucky and harshly dropped. We'll find out just how good Enya Breen is after a year out, Fiona Coughlin, of rugby. Yeah, she hasn't played any games. She's obviously returned to cut return to play after that horrific knee injury she got in last year's game in, in March and she hasn't played any rugby but I suppose Beeman has spoken about the intensity of the train and, and he's hoping that that's enough for her to slot in here because in fairness Aoife Dalton was absolutely outstanding last week I understand why they want to bring Enya Breen in in terms of that extra kicking option and also her ability to be an extra playmaker she's played 10 a few times but some big calls in, in the selection today by Beeman but he's going to hope that they, they do the job because this is the game that this Irish team have to judge themselves on this is the one they target. Holly Davidson, none more experienced than her on the uh, women's circuit. And, of course, recently in the men's as well from Scotland, Maria Hightour and Amber stamper Dustin are the assistants today with our TMO, Chris Asmus, ready to rock as Ireland get us underway at the ORDS. We're hearing a, a crowd of 6,500 tickets sold, which would be a record. And all of them concentrated on the far side of the ORDS stand as Italy provide the first handling mistake and it's a knock on first scrum to Ireland. Good long kick off by Dan O'Brien. Good chase by Ireland. And this is what we saw last week. Their defensive line and there's Neve Jones yeah, in with the hit. Yeah. Italy looking to force that offload yeah. and it wasn't really on when she was under pressure from two Irish defenders. Never in control of that to get the offload away. I suppose that style of Italy, they, they always look for that offload even if it's not on and that's why sometimes it puts them under pressure. Trout. Ireland have lost twice to Italy in the Six Nations last year and in 2019. Both of those defeats coming away from home. They've never lost in Ireland in nine previous matchups. Taken off the back. And Wafer was so good and impressive in France last weekend. Different position for her tonight, but uh, looking to continue that good form as Dan O'Brien is swallowed up with no room to get the pass away. Early carry for Sam Monaghan. Huge physical presence to have back in the pack. Italy again up very quickly. And two and three outside that uh, first Irish ruck. The ball's gone loose and it went backwards. So a chance now to play. And out it goes. First touch for Bavin Parsons. She's a little bit quiet. She breaks the first, the second, and the third is the offload. And onto it comes Wafer. A stunning start from Bavin Parsons. And on they go. Christy Haney now smashing away towards six metres out. O'Brien calling for it and getting it. Skip pass in the midfield. Enya Breen. First touch for her. Quick ball again for Riley. Chance now for Ireland and Dorothy Wall. Tackled well and it's quick recycle ball. Now they go left. Riley. There was space and numbers on the right-hand side. Scrum half opted to go back on the left-hand side. But Ireland still recycle and keep possession. Monaghan again. What a strong carry. Support from her second row partner. Dan O'Brien just delayed it slightly. Had Eve Higgins and Lauren Delaney outside her. It's a good start from Ireland. They'll be want to finish here. They had two visits inside the French 22 last weekend and scored on both of them. Big tackle on Neve Jones. She will feel that one, I can tell you. Lyndon Jugang wrestled to the ground by Jordana Duca. There for Riley. Quick pass from Jones again. And on to it comes Hogan. Ireland trying to clear out. Where's the ball? The Italians have it in the penalty. So all that attack and the opportunity for Ireland, they leave with nothing. 
super attack by Ireland. Just the space is out in those wider channels. Look when the ball gets it passed backward, gets out to Baven Parsons into her hands. She brings so much excitement when she's on the ball. Brilliant fend off there. Such power and pace and great support here by Aoife Wafer on the inside. She had initially made the break off the scrum going at number eight. It was good control by Ireland to work through those phases. And Italy haven't found touch from the penalty. It's a let off for Ireland and a bad mistake. Wafer releasing on the ground, entitled to go again. What a start she's made. Another carry from her and ball should be there for Riley. Let it go. Support from Grace Moore in the starting 15 this weekend. Coming off the bench, here's Higgins dancing away. No hands! Kayla Solari, no. Sign of her for the rest of the tournament after that injury picked up last weekend. But Rigoni is still there, her longtime centre midfield partner. And she will make life difficult for Ireland if they try moving to the backs now. Taken in by Dorothy Wall. Still there for Riley. Crossfield kick from Breen. It might sit up nicely. Katie Corrigan. Well done by Vittoria Ostuna Manuzzi. She was well placed to deal with that. Taken back over. Scrum five. Good return for Ireland off that. Their scrum has been solid. We see how strong Eva Wafer was off the back of it. They had numbers there. She saw a little bit of space for Corrigan to run into. She just delayed her run and allowed Ostuni Manuzzi get on the ball there. It's good attack from Ireland. They just need to make sure that they keep resource in the rook, that they work through those phases, and those chances will come. That space on the outside will come. Italy, as we've seen, they have those shooters going up. They have the likes of Rigoni. We've seen Tarani go up as well. I would love Dana O'Brien to really, when she's taking that ball, to take it really hard to the line. She's second-guessing herself whether to get that ball out into the wider challenge. Just commit to it and go and see what opportunities come from it. Yeah, and uh, a huge impact straight away from uh, Baven Parsons. We didn't see a huge amount of her last week. She was very well marshaled, in fairness to the French defence as well. But equally, I guess, pointed out this week that we'd love to see her coming looking for more work. Yeah, like I suppose Ireland's set piece really didn't function particularly the line out. But yeah, come in off shoulders, come in off the likes of Dan O'Brien's shoulders or even Enya Bream, wherever. Have a license to roam. Don't be standing out there waiting for the ball. Sorry, Although I do think there's going to be opportunities for it to come the way that Italy are defending. That space is actually going to be out there. Crouch! Bind! <laughs> Set! <laughs> Attacking chance still there for Ireland. It's gone down, far side. It's gone down, we're going to reset here. Okay, good picture here, same again. Ireland scrum again was very solid against the French last weekend until the starting props, Jugang and Christy Haney had to be replaced. And yeah. it all went a little bit pear-shaped. Yeah, I suppose they're quite light. Um, even our forward subs, they're all quite light in, in terms of that. So I would imagine the starting front row will go as long as it can. I don't think we'll necessarily see replacements on the 50 minutes unless things are going extremely well for Ireland. But we just see Wafer here again on Bind. attack and scrum. She's packing down at that number eight position to get her Set. pace off the back of it. There's the feed from Riley. Control at the back from Eva Wafer. And then... And you bring quick ball again, away for another big strong carry. She is a menace at the moment, and she's almost at the line. Sorry, Scored a try last weekend, so close to getting one again. Inside the first six minutes of the RDS, advantage being played by Holly Davidson to Ireland. They have a penalty in front of the post, and they are just hammering away at this Italian defence. Uh, Eve, thanks very much, that's one. Here. It'll be interesting to see what decision they take here. The scrum is solid, and Wafer has taken so much yardage uh, off the back of it. Scrum called. Yeah, I think that's the right Quite idea. Cold. It's important it, now that they, they focus on this. At times last week when they didn't focus on their scrum that France did get at them. Look at this from Aoife Wafer. Just so powerful and dynamic. 21 years of age. She's started her career with Ennis Gorthy Rugby Club in Wexford. It's her fourth cap of what a find she seems to be even early on in her international career. Yeah, look, we saw her first cap two years ago coming off the bench and she got a horrific injury. I think it was a hamstring ruptured off the bone and uh, just to see her come back and she's just in top shape at the moment and Bind such an addition. Three. I'm delighted to see her at seven um, uh, and I think she's Set. a real fetch with the ball but she's going in here at eight off the scrums. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see her have a go here. Now she's going to leave it for a scrum half. Now O'Brien, is she going to move this one wide? She is to Higgins. Oh, it's intercepted. And was that deliberate? I think it might be. And I might look at a potential penalty try here because was Paven Parsons on her own? It's a yellow card. A deliberate knock-on from the Italians who under all sorts of pressure early on. Thanks very much. Ten minutes in the bin. 
I just want to make sure that there's no... Um, and they're going to check for a penalty try. Uh, if she's the last defender, if not, it's going to be a penalty try. This would be interesting. If Parsons was unmarked and the ball had gone out, was she going to score in the corner here? Thank Italy you. have lost their full-back for 10 minutes. Just when I was about to say, wrong option to go out the back yeah. straight off that scrum, but look, you get Italy obviously down to 14 now, and if they get the penalty try off, but yeah, Chris, I don't think there was cover there. I think, I'm particularly Parsons in any sort there, of Holly? space. Yeah, that's me there. Be interesting Perfect. to see the wide angle from okay, this. Okay, it's coming up now, so it's the red headgear defender. I don't think the there's anybody outside her. The line. There's nobody there. If that there pass goes, she's in. Yeah, I don't think their scramble defence would have caught Babe and Parsons. No. So she's the last defender. We're only five metres out from the... Yeah, it's a penalty try, um, it has to be. ...try line. And if it wasn't for that deliberate knock-on, for me, a probable try would have been scored. Agree with those facts, Holly? Yep. What a start for Ireland this is. Fiona Coughlin, this is an incredible start. Absolutely brilliant. For seven minutes, they've been camped down here in Italy's 22, and now to come away, penalty try... Honestly, I think they would have scored in any way, but to come away at a penalty try, Italy down to 14 players for 10 minutes. Just real intent from Ireland. Their ball carriers, just their, their real drive that's trying to get over those gain lines on their big carries, and what a start. It's important now that they stay focused and go back down there and play this game in the right parts of the pitch. What a role that uh, Wafer had to play. Indeed, the entire pack as well. The carries early on from the kickoff. Dorothy Wall, Sam Monaghan, Grace Moore, Wafer, Hogan. They all got involved. Jones as well took one for the team with that tackle. And Vittoria Ostuna Manuzzi. That's the face you see in the dugout. We'll spend 10 minutes in the bin. Good hands here. Dan O'Brien, then Eve Higgins looking to get it in, into the hands of Babe and Parsons. And Ostuna Manuzzi was never in a position to catch that ball. Giovanni Veneri looks on. Worried figure even at this early stage because he knows what that means. And I think he knows now, if he didn't before, that Ireland are here to play. Another carry for Martin Lothfeld again, Jungang on her shoulder. And quick ball for Riley. The pace at which Ireland have started this game is frenetic. And now Eve Higgins trying to use her pace to get away. And the offload is good as well. Riley, more. On they go. Good, thanks, Tim. O'Brien. Drew Gang again looking for that pass on the outside shoulder. Here's Jones. Corrigan. Wrestled to the ground by oh, Aura Muzzo. Still there for Ireland though. Taken by the loose head. Support from our blindside flanker. And wrestled to the ground. Oh, right. Italy you. have yet to touch the ball. Flat line again. Monaghan, beautiful offload, but the has. And the hands just evading, and now the Italians maybe look to try and keep ball for a while and settle into this game. They've just been blitzed by Ireland. Still got scrum advantage. Still playing advantage for the knock-on. Scrum advantage over. Just over. Carried in this time by Giordana Duca. 45th cap today. 97 caps between the Italian second rows. Fedrighi and Duca. That will just give you an idea of how much experience the Italians have versus this very much new look and rebuilding Irish team. Lovely Dumbly from Blair and Delaney. And she has her pack to help her secure the ball. Dan O'Brien. I think she thought Damien O'Mara was there uh, on the Irish team. Damien O'Mara on the far side. Just line reporter, but uh, it's going to be a, a line out to the Italians. Yeah, hey. just see again that eagerness to try and get the ball into Baby Parsons' girl. hands, but. Really, it wasn't an option. It was well defended anyway. I think she was hoping that Faven might get in and do something yeah. magical, but yeah, it was right you. by Italy to kick that ball away too often. They play too much in their own half um, and get themselves in trouble, so that was the right option. We just see the way that Italy are defending. It's leaving opportunities okay, for Ireland to get their girls, hands the free and, and get that offload. And I know Sam Monaghan's didn't go to Eve Higgins' hand, but I do girls? think it was the right option. It was probably just a bit hard. This is night and day from Ireland from what we saw last year and we can we can say that now even with nine minutes on the clock what we're seeing in terms of passing the energy the pace the, the you know just the I guess the vision as well to attack. Yeah look last week we saw it in defence they didn't get very many opportunities to attack but they did get two entries into France's 22 and they did get two tries from it. Flat pass again to Wafer. No hands Italians over the ball I'm told to leave it now O'Brien sits back in the pocket Wait, don't forget that uh, Italy are missing their full back, so there should be a, a bit of space in the backfield for O'Brien to use that boot of hers. Offload inside to Veronica Madia. All there for Sofia Stefan, the captain. To Vecchini. 
and a strong carry from the Italian hooker. Box kick. Stefan had eight box kicks last weekend against the English, but here's David Parson. And she is like a wrecking ball. She went straight over Sylvia Tarani. A loose head prop like she wasn't even there. Monaghan again carries. Higgins, two on the outside. Needs to get the hands free if she can, but uh, good tackle it was from Beatrice Rigoni to put her down. Monaghan again. Riley. Back to O'Brien. Tell you the loose head prop for Italy. Sylvia Torani is still on the ground from that uh, bashing run from Baven Parsons. And uh, she looks in trouble over there. Green restart just here. It was Parsons' handoff. Yeah. Unbelievable power. Okay. Obviously, Parsons came onto the scene as a 16 year old, first capped as a 16 year old. And she's just, she was athletically Thank developed you. then and she still is now. Bang. Look at that handoff and then just. Bang. <laughs> Sits her down, and then that's great support there from Brittany Hogan to latch her through that contact. Sophie, just make sure once tackle is made, the girls are rolling Brilliant away. Okay? From there, and you know, just like obviously, the, the tempo of the match, and, and I guess the way the France, the French pressure on Ireland last week, both wingers didn't get a huge amount of space to work with the ball. But early on, we've seen what she can do here. I'm good, thanks, Max. Yeah, it's important that others create the space for her. But again, that she comes looking for it. I think Ireland tried to overplay it in their own half there. They were, I know they want to keep ball in hand and, and show their attacking right, flair. But as you said, no. Italy have no one in the backfield. The option is on there to kick and just play for that field territory and put Italy under pressure. Obviously, Italy are using their box kick off Stefan a huge amount, but if you put them under pressure and then you're going to win that territorial battle. Scott Beeman's got to be reasonably happy by what he's seen so far. Look, it's been all Ireland for the, uh, the first 11 minutes in the match and they've looking very in control of what they're trying to do. It's important that they don't lose focus. A, um, a blood sub? Yeah. It's walking wind right across the Italians so far. Uh, Sergio yeah. Torani still getting attention and uh, probably would have to go for a HIA at the very least if she isn't indeed able to continue. But Scorbini as Scorbini well. as well is in trouble with that blood coming from her nose. But anyway, look, substitution having to be made so she can try and get that uh, fixed up yeah, for 22nd cap to the open side for the Italians. And on comes Beatrice Veronesi into the back row. Looks like uh, Turani's OK to continue. And we're going to have a scrum. Yeah, obviously Ireland come into this team, this match with a full bill of health for Italy. Obviously, they lost Solari last weekend, but also their captain Jordana hasn't featured at all, and then Cavina got injured last week as well. So, you know, they don't have that depth within their squad to see them through a whole tournament if they're picking injuries before the tournament even starts, or then in the first first round of matches. Italians ranked seventh in the uh, current world rankings. Ireland tenth at the moment. Like and Italy went to WXV2 and they didn't lose a match. Like they beat USA, they three, beat Japan. Yeah. They they lost out on the Set. on the title because of points differential. It was two points differential with Scotland and Scotland. So they they do pull out big performances on, on the top world stage. Huge scrum from Ireland. Penalty as well, taken by Wafer. Off she goes again. Off she goes again. Brilliant. Looks for the offload. Now Ireland have room outside on the right-hand side here. Higgins, if she can straighten, is two on the outside. Here's Delaney, and now Corrigan trying to use her pace and skip around the outside channel. Managed to keep her feet in play. There for Riley again. Hogan out to Monaghan. Short pass to the captain. And Ireland reset on the left-hand side. A Brian Crossfield kick. Doesn't seem to be much cover across there for the Italians, but it's gone forward from Wafer, and that will be called back. I just yeah. think trying to force that a little bit too much. Great break by Wafer off that scrum where they had a penalty. Brilliant hands getting into the wider channels. Corrigan does well to keep it in. Look at this power from Wafer. She's just flying fit at the moment. And then they look through through some of the hands. Eve Higgins, brilliant, brings it right to the line. Lauren Delaney probably could have drew the defender a little bit more, but Corrigan does well to stay in there. That's going to be your mark, girls. I just don't know if that was the right option. I know I'm saying that because it doesn't come off. I know the two players, but Italy, in fairness, had scrambled back well and had a good defensive line, had players out there. Probably mismatches in terms of the players that you have out there. 
it's ex no, it's the exact same on yours. So let's go. 33 meters made from five carries and three tackle breaks is uh, a pretty impressive roll after 13 and a half minutes. And now we just see her go back into the seventh position on the on defensive scrums. Find. Set. Again, Ireland putting pressure. It was too early this time, and the free kick goes to the Italians. Early. Certainly don't want to see that. As I mentioned earlier, our bench, obviously in, in the front row, if the likes of Nevo Dowd or Side okay, McGrath probably would be coming. Side McGrath would probably come on for Christie if that's an injury. And Nine. just in terms of experience, when you're down there, you know, we'll see the ball in. still very inexperienced. This would only be Side McGrath's tenth cap if she came on. But also size-wise, they're a lot smaller than the starting starting front row. Yeah, and that was uh, pretty evident as Nine. well last weekend. And and uh, Jungang had to switch over to the tight head side at one stage, but hopefully Christiani is okay. I think she just came down awkwardly, and maybe sometimes it's that uh, it's that funny elbow when you come straight down on top of your elbow. It's, it can have that kind of shock through your arm. Hopefully, it's nothing more serious than that. Yeah, obviously, just see it here. She lands down, and then all the pressure of Tirani coming down on top of her as well. But Ireland had gone early at that scrum to give away the free, free kick. Great power from Ju Gang. It's pity just fractionally early. Italy also played. So Ireland obviously had the Celtic Challenge Cup with teams from Wales and Scotland, but Italy had something similar with teams from uh, Spain. So they went along the lines of I think it was Zebra and Benetton and used those club structures and they played it. So you know, as I said pre last week, I didn't think the standard was great in the Celtic Challenge Cup, but. It's a step in the right direction that players are getting more game time together okay. and, and whether they, that it's going to go down that route. I think it was World Rugby who actually funded that whole thing. And so it's just great to see that intent to get more games. Yes, yeah. the standard needs to improve, but there is a will to get more games at a higher level. Yeah, which is huge okay. and so important as well. The development of players, Blue one. Yeah. both coming through and those that are already there. But uh, there you see, I think uh, Sylvia Tarani, a little bit worse to wear from the physical encounter that she has had to put up with so far, plus Ireland's dominance in the scrum, and uh, Gaia Maris comes in. I'm sure she's altogether happy about going off. She doesn't look too happy there. I think it's in, it could be an independent doctor that's pulling her off. Maybe she'll get down the tunnel and be assessed for uh, HIA. We'll just wait for confirmation. She has gone straight down the tunnel, so probably is a HIA. Yeah, independent doctor re-looked at the footage and probably felt Crouch. that there was a big enough contact there that she needs to go and just be checked. And also, they're wearing the IMG mouth guards, you know, Find. that tucker. I don't, know, I don't know the science behind it, but the hits that they Set. get, um, that they go off just to be checked. Yeah, let me... I, I, I'll fill you in on the science there later on, John, no problem. Crash ball up the middle from Emma Stevenin. Italian still playing with 14 on the pitch, I'm sure. Australian okay, Manuzzi dying to get back on. Four. Have to wait our time though. There for Stefan. Another box kick from her into the sunshine. Back by Blue. Came back off an Italian hand. And picked up by Parsons. Ball there for Riley. Wafer. It's over the game line once again. O'Brien. Now we're only going to move the backs here, bringing out to Higgins. Little step from her, gets the offload. Two on the outside, nice hands to hang on to it there from Delaney, and now Corrigan. Moore. O'Brien to Monaghan. Italians coming up in that central midfield area to make those tackles. Out it goes from Green, flat pass to Wafer, and now here she goes again. Back inside to Wafer. Those two combining brilliantly. Parsons. And Ireland's open side there for Riley. Jones to June Gang. Was it, uh, it was flats as the referee, so play allowed to continue. O'Brien on the drop it. And that was forward. Bit of indecision there between Monaghan and Wall, who was going for that ball. But again, great attack from Ireland. They're going from width to width. As you said, Parsons and Wafer really working well in that wider channel, supporting each other off the ball. That was Stefan's box kick. Uh, how long in the Grace Mord as well, just to pop the ball up to Parsons before she gets milled into touch. 
Okay, let's, and again, I'll get Ireland it, looking to keep with... their back row in the wider channels. Great little switch there between Delaney and Corrigan trying to get her into the game. But just these two really working well together. Ireland need to go after this scrum now. Guys, how long on the yellow? Let's go. Thank you. 30 more seconds confirmation for Victoria Ostuni so Manuzzi. Next ah, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia Stefan to feed the scrum. You lose head on. For the time being, Gaia Maris. Let's see how she gets on here in the scrum. Against Christy Haney. Chance to relieve a bit of pressure. Corrigan's back there. It's going to sit up for her. She takes it on the first bounce. Delaney. Good step. On the ball. Chu Gang. Straight with her line. Out it goes from Breen. Pass to Wafer. Had to take it falling forward. Did hang on to the ball, but she hasn't released it. That's what the penalty's for. Holly Davidson right on the spot. Yeah, pass really stretching for Wafer there. The and well read by Rigonian and Dinka to get in over that ball. Dorothy Wall ran that dummy line a little bit too early. Well, Doesn't to commit any of the defence in. She really had to stretch for that one. You know, I'm commending Ireland's attack and it has improved, but they haven't scored with, with Italy down to 14. So, like, their option taking at times needs to improve. Yes, the space was out Thank there, you. but we go for an across field kick when it wasn't on, trying to force it sometimes into those wider channels when Thank it wasn't you. on. And you don't get any return when Italy are down to 14 players isn't good enough. So just that level of composure, do you think, in those situations? Yeah, and just, you know, making the right decisions, making those decisions under pressure as well. And, you know, you would hope and prove they've had so, Ireland have had so much ball. This is the first time that Italy had to attack inside Ireland's half. 78 possessions so far for Ireland, and most of it inside the Italian half. Let's see what the visitors to the RDS can do with ball in hand. It's a decent driving ball at the back now. Vittoria Vacchini and Stefan is happy to let her forwards continue. Now she's going to try and unleash the backs. What can they do from here? The pass almost going to. Beatrice Ragoni over the ball. Wafer has her hands on it. She's on her feet. That's brilliant by the open side. Eva Wafer equally as good in defence as she has been in attack. Yeah, great defence from Ireland. I think Nee Jones came in with a hit that wouldn't allow Dinka to get that offload away. And then Wafer just bided her time to come in. Yeah, just see that hit by Breen and Jones. And Eva Wafer. Unbelievably good. But that was good line out on Mall from Italy. No. It's just important that they understand each other and what they're trying to achieve. Rigoni obviously was working, looking for that offload, so then she overran it and wasn't there to support for the clear out that allowed Way for get in. And this is Ireland's first line out opportunity. Their line out was poor last week. I think it was only three clean line outs they won, two, were, two they won scrappy, and then four they lost completely. So they need to get this working from the start no to way. unleash not just their backs, but their mall as, get, as well. When they got their mall going, they made inroads into France. Yeah, 33% return is it not what they were wanted from the set piece last weekend. They need to start well here, and it goes to the captain, and it's a clean take from Monaghan. Now here's Grace Moore on the charge. Did it go forward? I think it did. Molly Davidson playing advantage, and she's uh, frustrated with herself. And Saracen's blindside flanker. Good. Let's go. Yeah, girls. Short and line out from Ireland. Monaghan wins it, they look for that dummy wall away for bears off and just ball leading with the ball, trying to force the offload as opposed to protecting that ball. Great hit there by Aragetti coming in. Girls, it's, it's up to the, both of the hookers to find the space that works. Okay, no, in and put your mark and then we don't move. Moore obviously was an IQ player, moved over to Ireland, was playing with Railway Union, but it's gone now back to England, playing with Saracens. 15th cap today. She's uh, an awful lot of caps from the bench. It's a chance for her to start and show what she can do here. Yeah, I, I, I thought it's around that it was an interesting selection. Um, that Edel Mac McMahon was completely dropped out of the squad, or Hannah O'Connor, who's a black row, was completely dropped as well out of the squad for more when she has had most of her caps off the bench. But maybe it is that dynamic kind of back row player that they're looking for, and another option in the line out. I know she was standing out of, of the yeah. short one there, but 
maybe that is what they were looking for there. So Rigoni then. Finds touch outside the Irish 22. Italians will have possession. It's uh, something they need to sort out now to scrum. That's uh, a couple of times now that Ireland have infringed, according to Holly Davidson, whether it be free kick or penalty. Yeah, they they have dominance there. It's just important that they hold that initial hit and, and are solid there. See Rigoni coming in with that right boot. Medea has, has the left boot. That's a poor throw. It worked out OK, but it wasn't plan A, I can assure you. It's there for Stefan. It's two runners outside both second rows. Fedrigi and Duca, who takes it in. And just stopped in her tracks. Vantage, two not rolling. Lee Jones not rolling away on after making the tackle. So advantage being played to the Italians. Still advantage. On the Grand Maris. Both sides and then for Stefan. Right she goes, taken in by Sara Tunesti. Go back for the penalty. No advantage coming. Yeah, Neve Jones rolling. not rolling away. I think it's a decision to make now to go for the posts or into that corner. Obviously, Larry would be their main goal kicker. Rigoni can kick as well. Nudging into the corner. Driving mall worked pretty well the last time. Yeah, if they win their line out, their mall, yeah. their mall has been good. So Rigoni finds touch just inside the five meter line and a prime attacking position now for the Italians to try and get something on the board here. Just seen Eve Jones, she made the tackle, she went low, but she got herself. She was probably being trapped, but it's your responsibility as a tackler to get out of there. Vacchini. Hits Fedrighi. Oh, now the ball from the Italians. This is where they're going to fancy their chances against Ireland. All that time in a WXV2. And coming up against stronger opposition. Are they there? They are. That's a brilliant driving ball try from the Italians. The first time we've seen them flex their muscles and they score a try. Yeah, Ireland don't compete at the line out. Brilliant, well worked ball from Italy and Bikini to go over for that try. She wasn't involved in the squad last week. Just shows how, how good they didn't get many opportunities. They take that really, really well. The shears off on the left hand side. They get numbers in behind. Ireland aren't quick enough to get back to get their weight behind it. And Bikini shears off on the right hand side and goes over the line. Seven points to five then with the conversion to come. But uh, the Italians, after weathering the Irish storm for the first 15 minutes or so, Thanks, have managed to get a foothold back in this game. Ireland be disappointed with their mall defence there. You know, they don't go up in the air to compete. That means the minute that Italy come to ground that they have to hit and not give them that momentum going forward. But Italy, in fairness, got it down, got go forward ball, and then were able to feel the weight of where the Irish defence were. Off the crossbar in the post. <laughs> Rigoni, it was as close as you can get. And the width of the crossbar denying her an otherwise uh, very good conversion attempt. So Ireland hang on to the lead, but only just. This is just really good by Italy. See the way they shear off. They feel that all Ireland's weight is up on the left. They go off on their left. And then likewise here, they feel that there's an opportunity on the right-hand side for Vikini to go over. Primary starts. Oh, oh, get it. Oh, mistake. Okay, now I can use it. Another box kick Outside. from the Italian skipper. Backwards. Backwards, Haney, but she didn't hang on to it. Ben on the ball. And Ireland under pressure. Outside. The base of the rook. Now advantage. As Higgins takes it away. Pass to Parsons, trying to go right. the outside. Back for the penalty. Christy Haney went in to try and play the ball, and Italy's over eagerness to try and get hands on the ball. I don't think it was Federighi, no, it was here. Vicini, the try scorer. Thank you. Had all her, her weight in her hands as she was trying to get in over the ball.
So O'Brien looking to find touch. Oh, there's a bit of a, a bags of that one from Shani <laughs> I don't know what exactly she was trying, maybe just to only keep it in play. But uh, and the sun is quite strong in that corner. But no joy for Elias Odinkia. And she's nothing to lose there. Yeah. One drop. No. No. Again, Ireland win the line out. Breen is going to take this at first receiver. Gives it short to Higgins. It's just all quite static from Ireland, though. And they go, taken in by Dorothy Wall. Now Ireland go left, O'Brien. Moore. And he supports to recycle the ball. Wall again. Tannins get up but was knocked forward. Not Advantage we played to Ireland and space on the right here. And you bring well tackled. Thank you. It's Monaghan again. Not gone over. Quick ball, O'Brien. Jones just dipping her head into contact. Ball again to Monaghan, the two second rows high. combining and the well. Italians going high in the tackle. And it's going to be a penalty. Five, it's very kickable as well. Interesting to see what Ireland decide to do here. That was good Italian defence, though. Obviously, initially from the line out mall, yeah. Ireland didn't get any go forward ball. And then there's just line is coming up really fast. Ireland, there is opportunities for the offloads because there is space in between. But it's just asking questions of Ireland's attack because they see the Italians in their eye line. Captain, what are we doing, though? And they're just forcing it for Ireland. High tackle there by Stevenine. Time off. It's Monaghan down injured, so they'll give her a chance. Can you just see Dorothy Wall there? Maybe there was a better option for her to take that ball forward and get go forward oh, ball again, just to try and suck the Italian defence in. Yeah, it's penalty. Yeah. Do you want to go for a corner or the points? Uh, let's go corner. Okay. High tackle, number 12. So they're going for the uh, corner here. Look, they have to get a return on this, turning down three points. And um, when you've just had Italy with a good defensive set, she's going the other side as well. That's where they, uh, there is a small breeze at, at her back kicking to that side. And maybe she just feels more comfortable on the left foot kicking for a touch there. But uh, she hasn't found touch. And again, that's just a terrible decision if you're not going to find touch and take advantage of it. To be honest, the way they're scrum, we're going in nearly would have taken a scrum. But if you have an opportunity to take three points, you've got to take them. It's four from Ireland and the Italians, I'm sure, absolutely delighted with that. We talk about decision making in Ireland's attack that they Nine. didn't get the return that they probably should have without the amount of possession Captain. they have, and then a decision there Ireland to turn down three points. You need to stay back. I don't know whether O'Brien, I thought that was kickable for Great her gosh. in terms of, of the posts, and she needs to take control of that at 10 and, and say to Mon, and I, I want this. She's not on her, uh, she's not on her feet, she's using her rock, she's put on her body weight. So, Italy with the line out, won by Fedrighi. Stefan goes right. Giordana Duca. Okay, nine, use it. Half an hour gone. One try apiece. Penalty try from Ireland. Bikini. For the Italians as Ireland knocked the ball forward and uh, it just seems like the wind has gone yeah. out of the Irish sail in the last 10 minutes. Yeah, look, they were so dominant and then to allow Italy with one opportunity to come away, in one opportunity in the 22 to come away with that try and as I said, Italy's defence was resolute down there in the 22 and Rigoni just kicking them into a better pitch position to look after that mall again. And the key factor as well for the Italians is they would never have panicked inside the 15, 20 minutes or so. They've so much experience with the caps there to be able to weather the storm. And now, you? you know, next oh, score here actually. gives I massive can't. momentum to whichever side can manage it. The Italians are in prime position. That's an unforced error from Paris and sun isn't in her eyes. Don't know whether there's a wind out there that she couldn't read it properly. 
More. Taken again by Giordana Duca. The Italians are going to try and mull the way over once again. It's at the back. Giacchini once again controlling the ball in the direction of the Irish Mall. Now Stefan told to get on with it. And a goal is Adinka trying to burst the way right through the winger. Not on ball, on body. Italians looking for a quick ball. Out it goes this time. Tunesi. Strong carry from Tunesi. Almost gets to the line. Back to her scrum half. Ireland desperate defending here. Can they keep them out? The Italians are almost there. Looking for the second try. Ball slowly come back. But they still have it. Almost at the line, the try's good! Crashing their way over from short range. A second try in the space of a few minutes, and the momentum now has completely swung back the Italians' way. Unbelievable. Two yeah. entries into the 22, coming away with two tries. Federighi going over there. At the, at the mall? Yeah. Absolutely brilliant return from Italy. They're back in that mall when the opportunity wasn't on. They have Dinka coming off the wing. And again, just real control from Italy. Great carry here from Tunesi. Such brilliant power and drive. She takes it on, on her own. You see the support there from Federighi. Low body position. She doesn't have to work too hard to see the line there. Just brilliant control from Italy and well deserved. You know, they get into that position, they take their opportunity, they back their line out, they back their mall, and they're patient. No problem with the conversion from Rigoni. And so all of a sudden the Italians race into a lead. Federighi and Vecchini both on the scoreboard and uh, full value for it. Look at that carry from Tunesi. She spots Riley and O'Brien and goes straight at both of them and sucks them in. And then Ireland just body positions are too high. They should be looking to get underneath that ball. We see what this Irish team are made of now, how they respond to this. Just over six minutes before the break. Again, Rigoni calling for that one. Straight into Linda Jungay. Yep. The Italians are going to move this one from inside their own 22. They spot a bit of a mismatch potentially on the wing outside. Good chase though from Corrigan to bring down her opposite number and Muzzo recycles the ball. Little short pass this time from Veronesi. Should be there for Stefan, it is. The Italians look to move it in behind from Giordana Duca. A bit bounce from Facchini again. Brings Always play to the 10-meter right. line. And Ireland now, no. all defensive work at the moment. The Italians are hurting their straps out to, to Rigoni. Pick from Tunesi. It's backwards. Ball's gone loose, but it did go backwards, according to Holly Davidson. Bernassi once again. Stefan looking at options here. All of them really on this left-hand side. Madia with the kick. Lauren Delaney is going to have to deal with this one. Is she going to let it bounce? Well, it wasn't over the line. She's going to back her pace here. Doesn't want to get caught. And she has been caught. Good tackle from Melissa Dinka. Dangerous to run across her own goal line. And she's given away the penalty. I have to say, what was Lauren Delaney thinking about there? Straight across her own line. Penalty given away. It's she's a handy three points. Again, bad decision there by Delaney. She had Parsons outside her. She wants to look to get that ball into those channels. She needs to give it to a player as fast yeah, as that. Awesome. She was really lacklustre originally. Great defence by Italy. They come up. But they, she just plays into their hands. She's no support there. And Vicchini, again, she's just been unreal in the last couple of minutes. But I have to say, the attack from Italy, they ran it from their own 22. They work through their phases. And then Medea sees an option in behind to try and turn Ireland. And, and she takes it. This is a really good attack from Italy. Much better decision making from them. Incredible, really, how the game has, has swung after the first 15 minutes or so. Ireland were so dominant, the Italians could barely get their hands on the ball. Now it's all Italy attack, and Ireland, defensively, have been found wanting on a couple of decisions in key areas as well. And the Italians, I'm sure, will look at this as an easy three-point opportunity for Rigoni, and all of a sudden, the gap 
is eight points. And you just look there, a discipline from Ireland's like seven, seven penalties given away in the first 35 minutes. You're always looking to keep it under 10, and you give away seven in the first 35 minutes. But again, credit to Italy, that's pressure that they're putting on Ireland that are forcing them to give away those penalties. But again, Ireland not helping themselves or making decisions like that, running across your own goal line with no support. Not for Scott Beeman to think about. Just shy of half time. Delaney's continues to get attention there. Be interesting to see how they would reshuffle if she went. There's no. Well, Dalton's not a, not a full back. I mean, Fowler we know is a fly half. In terms of, you know, what's there at the moment, I wonder, like, could Enya Breen drop into full back? Or, or Hig uh, Higgins into full back? Yeah, potentially, yeah. But um, I'm sure they've worked out these scenarios at training and have gone through them. So whoever moves in there would have probably had opportunities if they look to go for it a bench fit like this that they've no back three cover on it that they'll have worked out who goes in there in case one of the back three does get injured it didn't look like there was anything at all untoward in the tackle it was just a good hit really yeah no it was good hit but it obviously just the way she landed I, I think she is moving there which is good to see just hopefully just precaution It's important now Ireland regroup you know it's been all Italy for the last 10 minutes when Ireland were so dominant with the possession up about 75 percent it's now dipped Italy are coming back into it and have had so much for the last 10 minutes will that experience of the WXP2 and the number of caps that their players have is it, will that be the telling thing Mikhail Fowley's coming on, so maybe Dan O'Brien goes back into fullback. This looks like what's uh, going to happen. Fowley started in the man last week against the French. Sliding at 10 here, and uh, Dan O'Brien will move to fullback. And she comes. It was. Uh, Making my way home last Sunday from Le Mans, going to Nantes first of all, and uh, I met her father on the way, and the two of us were looking for the shuttle bus at the same time, so we, we got talking, and obviously, you know, very proud of, of what she did last weekend as well. She had a decent first half. It was only a first half, though. Yeah, I think that was tactical uh, part going into the game, that they were going to get a half each. Obviously, both were coming back from injury. I think the game plan last week, when that first half was, just kick the ball, and I think that was what she was told to do, and, and she did it really well. Um, she turned France a number of opportunities that allowed the Ireland's defensive line to come up and, you know, do have a good return for themselves. Just, I'm just really interested in this reshuffle of, of how things are, are going to go. And it, it'll also change the way Ireland have been attacking, won't it? I don't know. Like Fowley was originally a centre. Like she can move the ball. It's she's not just a kicking out half. Yes, she was brought in for that uh, last week, but you know she can attack there and with the likes of Breen outsider. Um, I would hope that they don't stray away from it, but I hope that they make better decisions on how they're attack, attacking. But definitely look to kick to play in the right areas of the pitch. In terms of last weekend, Ireland versus France, one kick for every 4.4 passes for Ireland. And, and here was uh, the penalty try incident at the very start of the game. And uh, a yellow card resulting as well for Vittoria Ostuni Manuzzi. Then the Italians hit back and really the forward power coming into play, that experience that we mentioned up front. Huge amount of experience. And even coming off the bench, there's a huge amount of experience um, for Italy. Hopefully that's nothing untoward. And it again, as I said, for Lauren Delaney, it is just precaution. But yeah, like this is a, an experienced Italian team. The likes of Federici, Duca, Algaretti was there back in... Aragetti was back in 2013. She was involved in the squad. So she's been around a hu huge amount of time and seen it all. And as I said, they will have got huge from that WXV um, two tournament. And even like with last week against England, they held them for 30 minutes. And then I suppose England's fitness and, and their bench made a huge impact. So they scored 48 uh, unanswered points. So Rigoni then to add the penalty. Handy three points for her and for the Italians. 
15 points to seven after 36 minutes on the clock. Right decision by Italy to go for that, just keep the scoreboard ticking over. And Rigoni, she's been one of the standout players for Italy for the last number of years. That centre partnership between herself and Solari has been really beneficial um, for Italy. And she's found her trade now in the Premiership over in England and Sale. She's getting more experience week in, week out at a higher level. Taken by Sarah Sayet. Ireland have wrestled the ball back though, brilliant work. On, looks like Eve Higgins got a hand on that. Now here's Jones, short one to Haney. Ireland looking to get hands back on the ball here before half time. Fowley, first touch for her to Moore. Gets the offload away. Dorothy Wall just running across the pitch slightly. Gives it to Hogan. Monaghan, straight line for her. And drifting across the pitch for Sam Monaghan. Fowley again to Jungang. And away turn. Thank you. Breen. The dummy switch with Wafer. She's been caught though. Strip is good. And the Italians have managed to rip it away through Elisa Dinka. Stefan, box kick from the scrum half. I don't need to put a name on it. It should have been taken, though, by Baven Parsons, who was behind, or I should say Fowley was behind and coming on to the ball. Yeah, person behind is always their ball. Uh, Fowley should have taken control of that. Cleaned up, but look, it's back in Ireland's hands. Where they go from here? O'Brien sets it going out wide. Moore needs a bit of help here. Too well to hold her feet for a second or two. No. Higgins. Off the head, play Four on. Pass. And now it's been intercepted right, and the Italians trying to break away. So carried in. In behind it goes for Maris. Space on the outside channel now. Here's Astoni Manuzzi. And has Aramuzzo outsider. The six defenders. Outside girls, thank you. Against England last weekend. Had a, a decent outing, even if the Italians got absolutely nothing to show for their efforts. Rigoni. Vantage. Poor take. Knock on. Again, this pitch position comes from Ireland deciding to try and run across the pitch and move the ball into those wider channels when it's not on. And credit to Ireland got the ball back then, but it was previous to this. Dinka had um, Dinka stripped Ireland of the ball. And then they just really good attack from Italy that get them into a good pitch position. You could see the pass there from Eve Higgins as well. It was fired straight at the shoulder of Christy Haney, giving her absolutely no chance of catching the ball. Let's go. I don't know if she was the intended recipient or not. You can see Maurice down on the ground, who is the substitute loose head forward. So the Italians hope she's okay to continue. And she looks like she is. With attention as well to Vittoria Vacchini. Seven handling errors for Ireland, three for the Italians. I think Ireland are getting better at change when they punch. They use their big ball carriers, the likes of Sam Monaghan. I'd love to see Dorothy Wall come into the game a bit more. She's always looking for that pass at the back. Look for that ball carrier. Try and suck in Italian defence. The moment Italian defence is, is holding firm, you know, it, whether it's the first line of their scramble, they're getting players there. Crouch! Find! Set! Gone down. down. Okay, in a set. Okay, we stay. Okay, girls, time off. Both of you. It's very simple. I give the mark and you set the gap. If we continue to have set up issues, I'll free kick the next one. Let's go. The instructions from Holly Davidson there. It's taking yes. way too much time to set the scrums. It's just it's dragging, really. Now. Crouch. Bind. Set. Yep. 
Use it. That's better. One it goes to O'Brien. Crossfield kick, Parsons after this one across, goes to Stuni Minuzzi. It's a race between the two of them. It almost stayed in play. And there we go, there is the half-time whistle. So the gloss of Ireland strong start well and truly worn off at this stage. But the result that Scott Beeman is going to have to do a bit of soul-searching in that dressing room. Giovanni Ranieri, for his part, will be delighted the way the Italians weathered the Irish storm and came back into this one because uh, they have scored the last two tries of the game and it is they who take a 15-7 lead into the break at half-time.
So, ready to go for the second half at the RDS. The sun has uh, disappeared behind a few clouds for the time being, but going to be a fly in the Thank dressing room of each side during the half-time break. Yeah, I'm sure the Italians much the happier in terms of how they responded to the early Ireland pressure. And we'll see what happens for the second half, Fiona Cochran. Yeah, look, Ireland were so dominant for the first 20, didn't get enough from that when Italy were down a player and Italy just drew, grew into the game and their experience and their better decision-making has been on show for the last 20 in the first half. Monaghan takes the restart. Take him back. Wait. Back to Fowley. It's a decent distance on that. It's going to bounce in behind. And a wall of green jerseys coming up here. Well, that is uh, not the cleanest kick I've ever seen in my life. And Neve Jones says, thank you very much. Chance for Ireland in the corner. And almost there for Corrigan, just couldn't get the, her feet still in play. But the flag is up for a line-out. What was that kick? I don't know what Aragashi was thinking at all. Like, I get a decision to kick, but first and foremost, she's not a natural kicker of the ball. I know. As Tony Minuzzi isn't either, but to kick it just into Ireland's hand to give them such a great attacking position. But can we just go back? That was a brilliant exit by Ireland. It was hit up by Sam Monaghan, a brilliant kick by Nicole Fowley that Italy had to turn. Aragetti was the first person there, but really she should have just <laughs> set it up. She should have done anything else than what she did do. But anyway, look, Italy might survive here. So Aragetti carries it into contact, but... Ireland just trying to hold them within that five metre line, force them to kick here. Okay, now and then maybe it. If they can get possession back, try their hand at something. There's Corrigan. Tackle made, play on. There's a bit of support, good clean out. Pull there for Riley. There's Moore, short pass from her. Irish forwards there. There's Monaghan. Again, doesn't want to get too isolated. Fowley calling for it. Three outsider, Higgins gives it to Parsons. No way past it. Double team tackle. Rigoni and Muzzo. Yes, nine. And the ball's been lost. On the ball. Taken in by Charles Tunesi. Adegeti. Better offload. Tackle from Jugang. Back with Stefan. Good strong hit again. And they just launched themselves into the tackle. I think that was Christiani who put in the hits there for Stefan again, though. Out to our hooker Vacchini. You're part of that. Nobody deep okay, for the Italians if they're it. planning to kick, but I yep, think it's the captain is going to take on responsibility herself. And Ireland have it back. And feel it goes from Fowley Parsons now. Put a room on the left hand side here. Trying to accelerate into advantage. the tackle. The and the tackle was high, so penalty advantage to Ireland. Kick Touch. for the corner from Fowley. They're going to go back for the penalty. High tackle. Ireland starting the second half in possession. In possession in the right area of the pitch, although when they were in attack, 10. they got turned over too easily by Italy. Good Italian defense. Then Italy they overplay it in their own 22 when they eventually go to the box kick. I know they're probably trying to see if there's an opportunity to get around Ireland and get some of their back three into the game, but when they're ultimately going to go to the box kick at the end of the day, they're just using a huge amount of 
I suppose, resources and energy in their own 22. It's not a great kick either as well from Fowley. If you're going to be kicking for touch, you have to be able to find touch. And that's a couple of times now. They just haven't had the distance from halfway. Maybe need to think about it. A change of tactics there. On the body. Hold in front. Good night. Brian puts one in behind. Sits up nicely for Astuna Minuzzi. The fullback is trying to run it from inside her own 22. Thanks, three. Thank you. Tunisi pass play back. Play on, play on. Stefan. She'll be able to find touch, and Ireland will have the line out. Again, Ireland turning down points. I, I don't know whether they feel it's not a, in their range. It looks like the wind is at Ireland's Thanks, back, Amber. so between O'Brien and Fowley, you would yeah, have hoped that tea, okay? one of them has it, but Thanks. turning down opportunities at points again. We saw in the first half when Ireland did it, and they did the crossfield kick, then gave away a penalty. That just allowed Italy exit and, and work their way up the pitch. And similarly there, just kicking the ball, trying to find touch, not finding touch, and just giving Italy another opportunity again. Nine. Ireland lose the line out. The Italians have it again. Out it goes from Araghetti to a fly half. Good. Madia finds space in behind. Corrigan has to race back there. Needs a bit of help from Parsons here. And then Parsons with two Italian defenders right in front of her, putting in the tackle. Riley back to Fowley. Needs to find a bit of distance with this and relieve a bit of pressure. It's going to bring play to the halfway line. Stefan. Just lost her feet there. Just to hang on to the ball. Vecchini, first try score, big tackle from Jugang to push her back. Madia, chip and chase, Ireland having to turn. Madia, where's this one going to bounce? Oh, Riccone! Oh, she must have thought she had a try on her mercy. She can't believe she couldn't hold that. Okay. Uh, right no decision by Italy again. Yeah, trying to turn Spring Ireland, ball. but it comes from this great work in the line out there by Federighi. Gets up, turnover ball, Medea sees space in the backfield. Yeah. Oh, fingertip stuff there. And we haven't seen Medea go to the boot that much, but in those last couple of phases, she's gone twice to it. Seen space in the, in the backfield for Ireland. Just goes to show Ireland were on Italy's 10 metre because line with a line out, and now they're on their own, happy. just outside their own 22 anyone, so with a, a scrum like because Italy. they lose yeah. a line out. Thanks. Brittany Hogan just getting a, a bit of strapping. Should be back able to continue, but uh, the Italian Siena has continued to test out that Irish defence as well. And you know, they're keeping Ireland guessing as well, they're changing things up quite nicely. Gonna be able to move that leg. <laughs> she looks okay, but we've no back row subs on the bench. You know, obviously, um, we have the likes of Dorothy Wall who could go back row, or even Sam Monaghan. But you have Curry okay. and Chu, two very inexperienced players okay, that girls, are that's gonna be your mark. well, they started off in the backs originally, but have now moved into the second row for Ireland. So, another scrum. If it goes to eight, the Irish put in. Fowley's standing quite deep here. I think we can, uh, we can guess what's coming. There is a bit of a breeze behind Seven. Irish backs as well. And I'm sure part of the plan was to try and take advantage of that and if at all possible. No, they're going to go out here. So uh, decoy at fly half, taken in by Breen, and should be there for Riley now to hit Dorothy Wall. Strong carry, wafer on her shoulder. Reload's good. Who started the game so well, but it has gone a little bit quiet. Here's Fowley straight into two Italian tacklers, one of whom Giordana Duca. Monaghan again. Taken down by Fedrighi. Here's Higgins trying to burst through the tackle, but she's lost it forward. Another handling mistake from Ireland and gifting possession back to the Italians. Tunesi trying to straighten the line. All there for Stefan. Knock on advantage over. Rigoni puts one through. Back 
Comes Dan O'Brien, has to deal with this now. Hold in front, Green. Left footed strike from her towards the touchline, and that's not a bad kick. Great touch finder. Wind at her back, but she got as much as she could out of that. Here's Eve Higgins, right idea to try and go towards the line, but you've got to mind that ball. Good defence by Italy. Good. Thank you. OK. Let's go. Holly Davidson having to let play to continue. There is uh, one of the Italian players. She's injured. She's injured. Say it, Coming down. back, She's yeah. Okay. Seems to be all right. Back on her feet. And the tight head will rejoin the line. Bikini <laughs> taking her time with the throw. Don't think it's worked out properly. Yep. Went forward as well off uh, an Italian hand. So advantage to Ireland. Here's Neve Jones. Carson screaming from the left hand side, but Ireland go right. And Haney. Not an advantage over. Riley looks for Breen. In behind to Fowley, who takes one straight into the ribs from Rigoni. Here's Higgins again. Little dummy from her. And over the 10 meter line. Monaghan. Two to bring her down. Ireland to use the space on the left-hand side. Haney now gets the offload, but uh, it's a one-handed pass to nobody in particular. Time counter looks good. And again, just inviting the Italians player, onto the ball, on. and they manage to steal now. Can they get something going from here? There's Dinka. And it goes, Rigoni. Puts it in behind Corrigan, but that's gone out in the full. Missed kick from her. Handing possession back to Ireland. Good. Ireland lucky with that one. Ireland turned over the ball originally from the line out. Eve Higgins did really well, but just see Avian Riling there not holding fur at the breakdown and good counter rook by Italy. Then they look to move it. Right decision, space there, but just too much on it. Let's go. There you go, the Italians. Pretty clinical at the breakdown. Six That's turnovers enough. versus two for Ireland. And Green take her place in the centre once hey, again. Captain. Jones to throw. Captain, you in? Monaghan calling the shots. And calls it to herself. Ball off the top for Ireland to use now. Fowley gives it flat to Wafer. Again, just a little bit too flat there. There's no chance to use that forward momentum by coming on to the ball. Here's Dorothy Wall. Tackle to bring her down. Ireland go left again. Fowley in behind. Corrigan. O'Brien. Parsons now. No room to work with, though. Elise is on the ground. Tight to the pick again. She doesn't want to lose the ball. And she's kept it. Riley with a step inside. And for Higgins. She's going to have a go. Moore. Monaghan straightens again. Over 22. Ireland still have it now. Fowley. O'Brien. Just delayed the pass slightly. Rafer gets the hat to the other side. Good one to Hogan. Hogan pushing for the line. And just short. Better from Ireland. Can they finish from here? Plenty of these chances in the first 20 minutes or so. Failed to take any of them. Oh, that penalty try. Banishment played again, not rolling away after the tackle was made. A decent position to try and close the gap. Dorothy Wall. Crowd roaring on and on here. Riley. Back it goes. Fowley crossfield kick again. Goes backwards. What was she thinking? The advantage was coming. Not rolling number four. But the execution just left a huge amount to be desired there. Yeah, look, thankfully she had penalty advantage, but. That was number four. I know you always try something with penalty advantage, but even if you work through, you're sucking in the Italian defence. There the opportunities. See where we go from here. But it, that was a really good attack from Ireland. A couple of individual moments of brilliance. Avian Riley sniping, Eve Higgins taking it. Eve Wafer with that little flick out the back to Brittany Hogan. 
and just some brilliant skills when they're on the ground tackled they then release the ball and they get back up and they drive through again but so important now Ireland just ensuring that they get first phase ball that they get the line out and see where they go from there big moment you feel momentum with Ireland at the moment can they set the ball it's gone down Crowder on Tappy, but let's see how it goes. This play continue, and it goes. Darby Wall. Can we get quick recycle possession? They can. Jones straight into Madia, who was up very quickly to make the tackle. Back with Riley now. Out it goes to the captain, and Monaghan turned and recycled once again. Shunkan can't hold it. Out it goes to Breen in the corner. Surely, oh, Parsons couldn't hold it. Can you believe it? The try line at her mercy. Just, I don't know, I know the space is there, but again, it's that execution, that eagerness to get the ball into the wider channels when possibly the passes, don't skip the pass. Hey, guys, hands, no, good no, no, hands no. will do it. No. Enya Breen, could he, I don't know whether Dan O'Brien was slightly in front there, that that option wasn't no. on. But has got to catch that, though. It's has there, to catch so. that. For me, it wasn't lucky there with exactly Lyndon Jungang as well that went backwards. Sorry, what was that? Oh, that was a try at the beckoning for Ireland. That's there, that's in our hands. Grace Moore goes off, and on comes uh, Fiona Chute, so she'll go. I think she's into the second row and Dorothy Wall. Row, yeah, and goes to the back row. Do you know what I said there just before half time that I want to see Dorothy Wall carry a lot more? And I think in the first kind of 10 minutes, she certainly was. She was looking for those carries like Sam Monaghan, trying to suck in that Italian defence. But Italian defence has been resolute as well. And they get a chance to clear here. Set! Only trying to put pressure in the scrum. Stefan having none of it, gets it away quickly. And look at the offload. Beautiful hands from Stephanie to Ragoni. And the two centres combining well. And again, the offload to Tunesi. Lovely Italian and, play and between backs play and forwards. No, you're on the body. Options both sides now. Stefan looking for Madia. Lovely short pass again. No look pass. Inviting teammate onto the ball. Harden managed to steal though, hands on it. It's taken back into the 50, right there. Breen kicks it away. Down towards Salisa Dinka. He's got time and space here to make a decision. Doesn't want to get caught. And hasn't been caught. Away she goes. What a run by the winger. But she needs support now. I think she might back herself in the outside here. The winger up against Breen is going to go over the 22. Can she go all the way? What a run by Alisa Dinka. The Italians on trying side. to recycle. Yes, Try is there for them, surely. Lovely no, short hands again. Went forward from Ireland. Still with the visitors. Aramuzzo. On they go. Giordana Duca. What a run by the winger. Can they finish from here? Quick hands needed. Out it goes. All the way around to Ostuna Manuzzi. Tackled by Parsons and it had to be made. Wall dives on the ball. There's no tackle. There's the ball. Frantic stuff. End to end Central stuff. Is legal. And now a Play real on. wrestling match on the ground. The Italians have managed to take it back. And they go into contact. Gaia Maris. Trying to get it back to Stefan, who has it. Italians queuing up now. Here's Vecchini, the hooker, and try score. Has a second try. Well, what? A piece of skill by the winger to start it, and then power from the hooker to finish it off. Unbelievable from Italy, from their own 22. Just some brilliant individual play. We saw Rigoni, we saw Tunesi making a break, then the ball out to Dinka. Sam Monaghan thought she had her, and they just worked through the phases. Absolutely brilliant, and the Thank hooker, you. who was to the fore in the first half, going over for her second try. Look at Dinka, her footwork. Sam Monaghan had her, but she just fights through the contact. Unbelievable pace. Ireland looking for their scramble. The fact they get back, Enya Breen eventually gets back. Make the tackle. Well done, Carrigan. Speed bump, but Enya Breen's there. And then they just look to work through the hands. Great fight in the contact from Vecchini. 
Ireland should have negated that back in their own 22. Thanks, Chris. Wonderful try. Conversion off the left post and over. So 22 points to seven. Brilliant team effort really I know the individual break by the winger but uh, the forwards and backs then to support yeah even in the lead up to Dinka's break there was some interplay between the likes of Regoni and Tunesi and then when they get into that 22 just looking to work through the phases and move that ball Ireland will be so disappointed Brittany Hogan had her Dan O'Brien should have tried to get underneath her but credit okay. to Italy right, thanks, they're just a joy to watch when they're in full flight the likes of Dinka the likes of Regoni double substitution and as you can see, uh, Molly Scuff McCabe has come in in place of that uh, Avon Riley. Tanya's hanging on to the restart. Fadrigi. Brought down by Hogan. 22 yes, 7 now. The it. Italians look very comfortable. And Aoife Dalton in, in place of Enya Breen, just confirmation as well. So. Straight 12 for 12 swap there, no. for the Irish back line. Nine. No hands in! Lasha, Ila! Lasha! Take in by Jingang. Right. Ball there for Scuff and McCabe. And it goes to Monaghan. Dummy for Monaghan. Can she get through? No. Again, Stefan, brilliant tackle. And it had to be. Ireland can't quite hold it. Did it go back? No way for it this time. Well, it's such a brilliant first 20 Tackle's minutes. Really it's been very quiet, Thanks. though. Since then, we've barely seen her. Monaghan, dragged down by Veronesi. Crowley goes out to Wall. Play on on that. She's got from Cade, Crowley again. O'Brien. Haney carries. And over the ball. Turnover's good. Gaia Maris manages Let to come, steal it back. Really good work from the Italian substitute loose head. In over the ball, latched onto it. And that's the seventh ball that they've managed to win against Ireland possession. No hands, three. So dangerous on the ground. Use it, nine. Not yet, not out. Stefan puts one up. O'Brien calling for it, but she completely misjudged it. Back it goes. Now, Parsons. No way past this time. Entry 14. <laughs> Penalty 14 against Mutso coming in from the wrong side. 14. Never made Italy it all the way just around. really causing Ireland huge amount of difficulties at the breakdown, whether that's slowing down their own ball or getting in for those turnovers. It's important that Ireland, when they're going with those runners, well, that they have someone latching on well. to clear out. Yeah. On those kicks. Great touch no, finder. Yeah. Left foot of Dan O'Brien puts Ireland five metres out. Be interesting to see what line out they go for here. Surely they'll be looking to go off the mall, but Italy have defended Ireland's mall really well. They don't contest in the air and then they go after it on the ground, don't give them any hey, more momentum. Spread back it's off. Six, six plus one. It's the way for standing at the scrum half position. Ireland needs something on the board and they need it quickly. Mall. Monaghan takes the line out. Now the mall goes. Can they push the way over from here? They're going to back themselves anyway until the referee says otherwise. They have four momentum. Denise Jones, the hooker, it didn't miss a single tackle last weekend in France, has come up with a try here at the ODS. Good reward for that kick into touch, five metres out, and kept it really simple. A bit of movement in the line out. Now it's mentally where this Irish team at. Can they get their tails up from this try? Big kick here from Dan O'Brien. The wind is at our back. Just Great work there. Neve Jones hits Monaghan. Wafers in. Good body positions. Neve Jones feeding the ball to the back. Really good work at the front there by Christy Haney. A great finish from Ireland. Really good work by the pack. And Ireland needed that badly. Still plenty of time. 18 minutes or thereabouts on the clock. Conversion to 
come now from the corner. Difficult kick. And Brian looking to make it an eight point game. Decent strike. Has she got it on target? The crowd certainly thinks so. The touch judges agree. And it is an eight point game. How crucial could that be? What a kick from O'Brien. Said her brilliant left boot got them into that position of a penalty and then what a conversion. We have a game now. So the Italians to restart. Substitute for Ireland again. Sai McGrath has come in. And Christy Haney has gone off. We saw the problems at the scrum last weekend. I wonder. Oh, that's brilliant. On to it comes Dinka. She was like a rocket there after that kick. Didn't even break stride. Taken in by Vacchini. Now the Italians looking to answer straight back here. Out it goes. Rigoni, lovely handling, beautiful line. Ostuni Minuzzi inside the Irish 22. Trying to recycle. Dinka still on the ground getting attention after taking a tackle. From gathering that restart. Looks like she's okay now to continue. Vecchini again trying to use that power. She has been a menace. Arigetti. Tunesi. Another carry this time. Veronesi. Pumps the legs in contact. Tunesi. Straight into Irish contact. I think Jones with a tackle. Puts her down. Vecchini wants more. Italian forwards now just beginning to stamp their authority here. Yes, nine. Say it. Dragged down by Wafer. Back with Stefan. Tunesi again. Pick straight to the middle. No defense for Ireland. Anagetti for the line. She's short. Ireland told to release, the Italians now, surely a try here, will almost seal victory for them, can they push it wide, they must do, onto the ball, and it is a try, beautiful from Aramuzzo in the corner, the winger has silenced the Irish fans at the RDS. Unbelievable again from Italy, it all comes from Aragetti who works through that rock, and then just looking to get that ball out to Muzza. Question whether that pass was forward from Madia out to Muzza, but the TMO will check okay. that in the background. And what a, what a try from Italy. That's the bonus point if it is confirmed, but uh, a brilliant team try once again. Dalton does so well to get under Aragetti then, but Ireland's defence was all sucked in there. Two player overlap for, Dink, yep. for Muzza to go in. Can we just clear off that last pass as well? Quick hands here, that's what yeah. uh, the question mark is over. Was that forward or not? It's, it's hard to tell from this angle. Madia pass on the outside. Certainly, Aramuzzo was coming on to. We're going to check this one. Okay, so there's two things to check. Yeah, we're just going to see. We're going to clear off number eight's pick from the base to make sure she's onside. Yep. And then we'll clear off the pass just to be safe. Okay, so checking to see, first of all, if Aragetti was onside when she went through. And then the pass from Madia. Ireland has to okay. question though how Italy got into so this position. It was from a now, kick off um, that they didn't clean up. That Dinka looks to have both gotten. feet onside when she picks up the ball. Yep. I'll show you in real speed. Thanks. So looks like Adagetti is on for you now. So we're just checking that eight is in an onside position when she picks up the ball. Correct. So there's the pick up now. What she looks to be, yeah. So she's Correct. On, so she's onside, so we can now move on to the pass. Ireland asleep there. We're bringing up the, the pass now. Pillar. I, I don't know, do we have an angle here that's going to definitively show whether this was forward? Yeah. That looks, looks like it behind does go the line forward. Um, when she passes the ball, the ball for me goes, travels forward and it's caught clearly in front of the five. Yeah, that's forward. You can see she started before the five. Agree with those facts, So it's going to be no try. Yeah, she's about a meter meter in front of the line and yes there is that whole physics and dynamics of it but the pass her hands are ending up in front of the line and so is the pass great communication there from holly davidson and tmo yeah that's why she's one of the best referees in the business holly davidson 
and it's the right call, you have to say so. It's a, a uh, relief for Ireland. Girls, so the question is now, can they take advantage of that? Okay, they uh, still have eight points fourth? to bridge and 14 minutes to play. Yeah, and the position that they're in, uh, this scrum is so important. Obviously, Sai McGrath has come on in the tight head position. And last weekend, she had a tough time of it. She switched from loose head back to tight head. Lots of messing going on. Okay, time on, See Eva Curry coming in there now. I think she's going on to the open side. And Dorothy Wall is going off, but this scrum is just vital that Ireland lock it out and that their exit from here, that they clear their own lines. Fourth cap for Emer Curry and a crucial one you have to say coming in at this juncture, 14 minutes to play. Crouch! And Ireland need to clear their lines. The Italians, will they try and put pressure on here at scrum time? You for a prop, don't forget, in uh, Side McGrath is in place of Christy Haney. We saw problems in France last weekend. Look at the Italians trying to put pressure on. Ireland lock it out though, and that is a decent scrum. Now, Dalton, I'm sure keen to get stuck in here after being left out of the starting 15. Back to Fowley, right for the kick. Got plenty of distance on this, and Ireland trying to come up and put pressure on. Here is Ostuni Winuzzi. Long time since her yellow card, and uh, she's made up for it with her performance since then. Advantage. Penalty. Ireland not rolling you away. You can have it because 11 is in the way. 11. Eve yeah, Higgins thought she was in there to go after the ball, but Baben Parsons hadn't rolled away. That would, wouldn't allow the Italians to clear out that rook. A good initial exit from Ireland. Solid scrum to get Dalton off and a big ball carry. Then the decision to kick down the middle of the park to try and split Italy. Good kick Thanks, chase Amber. and Parsons just needs to make more of an effort to, to get out of there. Yeah, Penny for your thoughts, Scott Beeman. I suppose it's the question is now whether these subs can make the impact that he selected them to make. Obviously, he dropped a lot of experience in the likes of Adele McMahon and Hannah O'Connor. Clean take Ball. for the Italians. Little Chance here. Look at the driving mall. Already successful with a try from the mall in the first half. Stefan. Now trying to feed the back line. Ragoni is a room on the outside. There is room. The pass is backwards this time. And out of the show. Yes, she gets there. No doubt about this one. No question of the for a pass. And that should be it as far as the game is concerned. Bonus point try there for Italy. And again, a team try. Comes through the forwards, doing a job in that mall. It's tightening up that Irish defence for their winger to go over for the bonus point try. Just brilliant passing here. Medea gets it into wider channels. Just the footwork of Ragoni that asks questions of the defence that creates the space on the outside. Corrigan, you know, last week we questioned her defence. Could she have done better than inexperienced player? But again, great work from Ragoni on the inside. And then a pass to put Muzzo away. Thanks, Chris. Look, Eve Higgins on the inside. She's in two minds of how hard to push and how hard to go. She really should have had, had Ragoni. So conversion then. From Ragoni, that's going to fall short. And the Italians have the bonus point wrapped up with 10 minutes still to play. And Muswell, she can enjoy that one. She was denied by the TMO, but no question, this one, as good as it gets. Well, it's... Uh, it's been a hugely entertaining game, you know, for different reasons. The pendulum has swung so many times. Ireland's bursting out of the blocks. Penalty try, probably should have had more. The Italians finding the result to come back into it. Just as I say that, they've missed the ball completely. Did that come off uh, an Italian? You know, they should have uh, the line out here and the put in. But uh, it has swung so many times this match. That can be your yeah, like Italy really didn't read that well, but. It's important now Ireland go up and, and compete in the air. You know, can they come back from this with 10 minutes left? I think it's important that they just get the ball and try and work through some phases and ask questions, see their attack that we saw in the first 20 minutes of the game. Well, that wasn't the plan, it wasn't straight either. And Ireland, we have the scrum, an option here from the crooked line out. Let's see what they decide to do. They're going to go for the scrum. Line out called. Oh, no, they're going for the line out. Excuse me. Uh, let's get set for the line out then. 27-14, 10 minutes to go. It's not impossible, but they need to score very quickly. 
Yeah, interesting decision again, yeah, going for their line out. out. You know, we yeah. saw them scoring them all, tried from five metres out. Up, It'll be interesting to see whether Italy go up and compete and put pressure on yeah. Neve Jones's throw because it is susceptible that they can get up and cause trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, the attendance today, 6,605 people, a record attendance at the RNA. So, just confirmation there of the Tanoi from Declan Carty of the record attendance. Confirmation 6,605, which is a record attendance for a women's international here at the ODS. And the crowd still hoping for something for Ireland in this match. Got to win the lineup. Monaghan slaps it back. Taken quickly. And it goes from Fowley. Now here's Dalton. Scuff and McKay, on the go. Hogan now. Quick ball leader for Ireland, Jones. Into contact goes Chutes. No hands, no hands. And Ireland go right this time, Monaghan. Captain trying to lead the charge. No, she is clantering. Try here would set up a grandstand finish. Fowley gives it straight to Curry. It does well to hang on in contact. Little step inside now from Dan O'Brien. And she's five metres short from the line. And Ireland have possession back. Hogan. Scott McKay looking at options. And that is not the time for a drop pass. Just about being clinical in the 22. You know, the line out wasn't clean. They managed to get it back. They managed to get some good carries. But Italy's defence is really connected. They're making their hits. They're not allowing Ireland get those gain line carries. Lyndon Jungang, she should have had that slightly in front, but two hands were there. She should have had it. It's like she almost stepped back to go forward. and. That's when she knocked it on. OK, let's get set and then I'll put time back on. Let's go. There you go. 27 missed tackles for the Italians, but they lead on the scoreboard. That's where it counts. Time back on. Crouch. Another scrum. Bind. And a chance for the visitors to clear. Set. Well beaten by England last weekend. Didn't register a single point, but they have 27 on the board today, a much improved performance. And they have seven minutes now to hold out for their first win of the championship. <laughs> Kelly from Fedri, I should say Jordana Duca on that occasion. Back with Stefan. It's going to take a time here, I'm sure, using all of her experience. Can't take too much, one of the new directives to get on with it. Parsons, big tackle from Dinka. No hands! Penalty. Clear, clear hands on the ground. Garland maybe have to get on with this one. Yeah, but I still, still think they're going to go for pitch position and go for the line out. Uh, on the five, thanks. O'Brien oh, finds okay. touch. You counter rucks through. Ireland have the line. 20, out. then in the ruck. Hands. Ten is. Correct. Yeah. Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? Okay. Time off. Hold her amber. Number three. So ten. change for Italy. Lucia Guy comes in at uh, tight head, the veteran at the stage for Sarah Saye. 98 caps I propped against her in the 2013 yeah. Grand Slam I, 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 final. I'll tell you what. OK, time back on. Lucia Guy. She's been around for a long, long time. Substitute tight head. All back. Ireland can't win the line out, and that is just criminal now at this stage. Brilliant line out defence from Italy, but just easy for them to read. It's straight up at two. They just get a player up and put pressure on both Neve Jones' throw, but also the jumper. Take under the high ball from Scruff and McKay. There for shoots at scrum half. Here's Wafer. And tackle. Ireland go left this time. Jones. Straight into Gaia Maris. 
No room for Monaghan to come on to that ball. Chopped down by Guy. Fowley. Running out of time, Ireland, to get something to give them a chance here. Eight points, or seven points, I should say, but put them in the losing bonus point at the very least and get them off the mark at the bottom of the table. OK, now, thank you, 11. Monaghan. Italian defence very composed and still getting off the line quickly, even despite the tired bodies out there. Jones. Scuffle McCabe goes left, Fowley calling for it. Behind to Dalton, bounces off one and the pass to Wafer, tries the dummy, now Parsons, step inside for Parsons, Bavin Parsons, can she get the hands free, she had support. Ireland still with the game. opportunity, now Hogan, if they score in the next minute or so, they will have time. Over the ball, out of Getty, trying to slow it down, there for Fiona shoot this time to carry, and she's five metres from the line. Yes, nine. Monaghan. Ireland smashing away. Oh, it's dropped again. Dalton this time, just at the crucial point. Ireland leave empty handed. Yeah, okay. the amount of errors from Ireland. That was a brilliant ball for me for Wafer to try and get into Parsons' hand. But this tackle from Renese. Just sensational scramble defence and, you know, Baven Parsons normally gets away from them, but just dulled and taking her eye off where she wants to go. Then the amount of individual errors and knock-ons when they're in a really strong position. Can I ask you please, uh, we're almost at full time, it looks like the result is not in doubt. Uh, Fiona, hey. can I have your player of the match please? Hey, look, I thought Sam Monaghan showed really well from Ireland with a huge amount of carries, but it was the Italians to the fore, the likes of Tunesi, Rigoni, but it was... <laughs> Vecchini, who yeah, okay, just two yeah, tries yeah, to her yeah, name. She's still on the pitch at 76 minutes. She's been to the fore, I think, particularly in the first half when that momentum yeah. changed for Italy. She was to the fore, both in attack and defence. Well deserved, Vittoria Vecchini. A try as well, as you mentioned. Kick starting, two tries, kick starting the Italian response after Ireland early dominance. That was the first try. She scored directly after half time as well, powering her way over from there. And she deservedly is the player of the match. Last three minutes or so. And the Italians with the scrum. Fine! Set! Now, two, three! One side, nine. Use it, nine! So the carry off the base of the scrum, just relieving it a little bit of territorial pressure at least and give them space towards that 22. Chris Darling now can hope for really is a, a losing bonus point but even with that they need possession they need to score another try. They have possession and Wafer rips it away. Scuffle McCabe can they catch Italy unawares here. The offload from Monaghan was straight to a blue jersey. Here is the Chia guy. 98 cap as we all said. Offload taken in by Jordana Duca. Back in the pocket is Beatrice Rigoni and finds touch outside the 22. Yeah, good control clearance from from Eddie to see Sam Monhan trying to get that ball, keep it alive. Great work from Italy in those passing channels. While Italy sometimes do overplay it in the 22, they're, they're really in control and comfortable and then get a good clearance kick away. Jones again, throw, but look at the Italians getting up still to steal that line out, taken into contact by Alessandra Frangipani. Rigoni, intercepted, chance here, Katie Corrigan on her second cap for Ireland. Is this going to get them a losing bonus play at the very least? Yes, it is. The Leinster winger touches down for her first international try. She read that so well. And we've seen this time and time again from Corrigan in the County Cup. Huge amount of tries to her name. Then to do it on the, on the international stage, on just her second cap. So the threat was on from Italy. She just sniffed it out. She came up high and picked it off. 
great finish from her. And crucially underneath the post as well, which makes the losing bonus point almost a formality. Tan O'Brien isn't going to miss from there. Ireland will leave with something at least. Here, listen. Look, good fight. They've been in the 22 a few times, but that's Rigoni. Just forced it. Did she, there was three Italian players out there, but did she see Corrigan in her eye line was just trying to force that ball out there? Well, you know, dare we say it, there is still time. It's uh, the last minute, but Italy are in absolutely no rush to take this restart, as you would imagine. And Ireland need a miracle. They have 30 seconds to rescue a win. Well, first of all, they need to claim this kickoff, which they didn't the last time Italy kicked off to let Dinka to get it. So someone needs to put their name on this. Captain Sam Monaghan. Charges forward. The crowd at the RDS. Roaring them on here. They need to keep possession. They can't kick it away. Here's Higgins. Ireland do have the pace if they get it into the right hands. And Corrigan tries to set away. Brings play to halfway. Ball still there. No mistakes now. Italians, next time. If they can get the ball wide, the one pair, Baylor Parsons, we know, has the pace to go in alone. It's a penalty. And Ireland, if they go up to touch here, will have the lot time for the line out. Dan O'Brien and the responsibility. She's got to hit touch. Do you want to rethink your uh, player of the match there in a minute, do you? Good by Ireland. You know, 30 seconds left in the game. And the they're wise enough to keep but look to try and get the ball in. Corrigan makes good line. She, does she make it? Oh, what a kick! What, what a kick. kick! What a finish we have at the RDS. The record crowd are on their feet. Okay, on the line. Is this right. going to be the most unlikely comeback for Ireland? They're deep in discussion in the huddle. Chose to throw, they must win the line out. Look, they've lost three. There's been a couple of scrappy ones and the ones they've won. It's about keeping it simple. Oh, Italy will probably stay on the ground. Or, do you know, do they just go hell for leather and just throw some out the air? They probably actually, they're thrown up at two, I would imagine. Ireland have got to win it. Sam Monaghan takes it. Ireland set them all. Can they push their way over from here? Six points to gap. They need five plus two to win it. It's at the back with Jones. She's still going forward. Ireland's still going forward. Can she get there? Neve Jones. Still in possession, and now the Italians stop them all. Where's the ball? It's gone to the back. Scuffle McCabe. They've lost ground. Dalton. Italians desperate defence. What a finish. Ireland got to keep composure. Again, Monaghan with another brilliant carry. Scuffle McCabe needs numbers out here. Taken in this time by Jones back on her feet. Nothing that Tinker could do about that one. McGrath this time. Got to hold it. It's turned the wrong way. Italians just about roll away in time. And away, Blue! Options left and right. Fowley gives it to Wafer. Wafer powers the legs. She's tight. First player. Oh, she stripped it down and don't protect the ball. It's all over. That's it, incredible. They didn't protect the ball, took their eyes off it, and the Italians can't quite believe it. What a turnover from Baronesi. We saw her with the scramble tackle of Baven Parsons when she broke through. And there she was in over the ball. Ireland slowly, when the energy was with them, they were just too slow to resort that rock. It was there for them. You know, the line out mall, they drag it down, they work through the phases, but what a finish to the game. Italy were ho and hoes, and then they, Ireland come back into it. We have to say, on 60 minutes of that game, Italy were the better team and deserve a winners today. First 20, it was all Ireland. She thought this was seen Ireland. Green shoots, they were brilliant in attack, but poor decision making allowed Italy back into the game. And you have to say, for the next 60 minutes, they really took it to Ireland, both in attack and I thought their defence at times were absolutely outstanding. What a game of rugby. Well, what the last 10 minutes of rugby. Well, what a game. Look at that, everything. Not perfect by any means, but who cares? It was entertaining right to the end. Full-time score in the RDS. Ireland 21, Italy 27.